writer, director, Daniel Carl. My name is Sean Brown. I'm with the screening committee with the Sidewalk Film Festival, and I'm going to kick things off with the first question. Um, it's something I'm curious about, and I'm sure everyone else is too. How did you find and choose your subjects for the film? Uh, I just wanted to thank the festival real quick. This is my second film here. Uh, it's my second time down in Birmingham, and I really love it. Um, it's a real honor to be in this theater, too, because I was very jealous uh, a couple years ago every time I saw something here. So thank you for programming it in such a beautiful place and for coming Sunday morning. Um, uh, so this film was something that I started with a colleague of mine um, very early on. We just sort of found, uh, we found Pahokee first. We knew about the, they call it the Rabbit Rundown. It's become a somewhat well-known sort of regional thing that the young men in town do. Um, and we wanted to explore young you know, male masculinity. Um, at the time, it was about 2008 when we started sort of uh, prepping for the film. And we wanted to find three towns with similar sort of, not necessarily demographic, but similar sort of socioeconomic um, just, you know, low population, sort of boom town that's sort of in maybe like fading in the last few decades, um, built up around a factory or a mine or something that we could sit, we could explore, you know, in, in the year 2000, um, what is it like for a new generation of men to grow up in, this, in, in these towns that traditionally you would follow in the footsteps of your great grandfather and your grandfather and your father into the same sort of line of work. And we found that these, these men were for, were for the first generation to sort of think about maybe expanding the horizons and moving out of town and just sort of seeing what other opportunities there were for men in these towns where, where opportunities were sort of slowly dwindling away and, and things were changing. So we sort of found the towns first and then we sort of planted ourselves in each of these places and, and you know, made ourselves known and, and followed different guys around for a while. And, and, you know, we had a cast a pretty wide net at first until we sort of zeroed in on, uh, on Larry, Nick, and Ty. So there's lots of footage with some other guys that come in and out of the movie here and there, but. Um, we knew it was important to focus on one subject in each town and let their lives kind of intersect in, in the ways that they would naturally. Was it your plan from the very beginning to give yourself a, a seven-year time span, or how did that come about? Uh, no. Um, we started out wanting to do um, a little bit more of like a deeper dive into a shorter period of time, um, a year or two maybe in each of their lives. We didn't really know. It was a pretty open-ended project when it started. Um, and the, uh, the, the longitudinal elements sort of came, came about just sort of naturally as we made the film. And it was, it was always sort of a labor of love. We made it kind of in between making other films. I made a couple other films inside the time period that I made this one. Um, and it just, it just sort of uh, kind of kept going. Things would happen in their lives. We want to go down and film it some more. And then suddenly we realized, okay, well, all of that early footage was them sort of talking about where they wanted to be in five years, ten years. So why don't, why don't I just go and let them sort of speak for themselves? So. Um, what started as like, well, maybe this will be a little epilogue to our film, again, just kind of kept snowballing and, you know, six months became a couple of years, and now the film is about 50-50 with the old footage and the new footage. So it just sort of, the film kept kind of strengthening the more time we spent with these guys, so we figured why, why rush it. Who has a question? Um, the, qu the question is, how did he choose the title? Sometimes I answer this better than other times. Um, it's, a, it's a title that we sort of, we sort of stuck with early on. Um, it was always something that I thought could kind of be a placeholder, um, but the longer time I spent with it, the more sort of parallels I saw between what we were actually filming and, and the title. And, and I think when a title doesn't, um, doesn't bore me after a couple of years, it's usually a good sign. Um, so it's, it ended up just sort of sticking. I wasn't able to think of anything better. I, trust me, I spent years, and this was always the one that sort of rose to the surface. And I think, it, I think for me, um, the interpretation that I like the most is that I think a lot of films, um, or a lot of stories about, about men in these, in these sort of parts of the world, um, tend to highlight people with a more immediately kind of bombastic story or, or a little bit more of an obvious sort of story arc like, you know, somebody trying to win the championship game or get into college or blah, blah, blah. All, all totally great stories, but I, I was, I wanted to see what it would be like to put, you know, quote unquote ordinary young men um, as sort of the leads in a film and let them really just, they're in every scene, everything you hear is their own words. So sort of elevating, you know, sort of the every, every man um, character to sort of a, 
a cinematic hero. So, so that idea of sort of the cowboy and what that sort of actually looks like in you know 2018. And and um, I, to me, if you spend enough time with anybody, their story will be dynamic enough to to tell. And everybody has sort of an interesting way that they got to the place that they are. So um, it was kind of like let's cross our fingers and, and hope these guys' stories you know turn into turn into something dynamic. But uh, but if this is something I learned over the course of this film, which was about a nine year process for me is that um, if you're patient enough and you spend enough time with people, everybody's got a dynamic story to tell. So, um, yeah, I just like the idea of sort of elevating these kind of young men to sort of heroes of the, of the screen, and it really works in a place like this, too. So thank you for helping me prove my point. Who else has a question? Yeah, you right there, man. So the question is, did uh, uh, Nick and Tyler, uh, Tyler's uh, choices and outcomes surprise you? Yes. Yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole thing, I mean, a lot of people don't think about it this way, but I also aged, you know, eight or nine years over the course of making this film. And there were a lot of things that I thought I was going to be doing when we started that ended up turning 180 over the course of, of the process. And that includes where all of the guys, you know, ended up. Um, we had no idea where these guys were going to be. Where they, you know, I met Larry when he was 13, so it was like it was very open-ended. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was a little bit surprised to be honest. Um, to say nothing of Tyler's work ethic or anything, but I just was surprised to see Tyler. It felt like sort of a very youthful dream, and he had a lot of money invested into it, and I and I wanted him to do well, but I wasn't expecting him to be able to make a living um, just racing cars, which he does, and he you know he he feeds his four daughters and. Um, he's really, you know, he's, every time I go down and meet him, he's doing better and better and better. So that was surprising to me. That was the one that felt a little bit like maybe the most out of reach. Um, and he's, you know, he's doing really, really well. Um, Nick, Nick was interesting because he always has that, he has a bit of a wall up on his, on his personality. He's, he's sort of trying, um, which I think we all do, to sort of, you know, put on a little bit, I think he's a little bit embarrassed and you hear it in his first bit of VO about where he is and I think most people who come through Trona are there to sort of take pictures and kind of make fun of how small it is and there's one red light and blah blah blah. And I think he, try, he tries to sort of hide that behind um, showing that he too, you know, he could buy a car, he could buy a house, he could, have, you know, and I want to be here, this is actually, you know, I made fun of it when I was a teenager but I realized that I actually love Trona. And, um, I was surprised to see that turn in him where uh, something that I was worried was going to be he was going to be kind of doomed to stay there was actually something that I legitimately feel like is now he's, is where he wants to be. Um, so that was surprising too. And then of course Larry's story was just was just really tragic and um, not at all what we necessarily thought we were going to be getting into when we started. But it was it was important to us to stick with it and, and with you know with Larry's blessing and his family's blessing we stayed with him. He let us you know film him in prison. He wanted to make sure that he kind of held up his end of the bargain so to speak. Um, and it was just a really trusting relationship. And, and I. I thankful that he let us sort of stay on board even when things sort of took a turn and, and um, hopefully his story is, is meaningful to people to see that sort of unfold in real time that way. But, uh, but yeah, I mean the whole thing was a constantly surprised, constantly sort of shifting gears, sort of trying to, trying to get up above the film and see all the pieces and see where the stories are going. But the whole thing was just sort of a, a bit of a wild ride. But, but um, yeah, yeah, I felt like if I didn't stay true to the original concept and just let, things, let the guys sort of lead the story, um, it would feel a little bit artificial. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have any plans to revisit the guys? The, the question is, is, does he have plans to revisit them? Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying my time uh, away from those three towns for a little while, but um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I, I, t I stay in touch with them online. I texted Larry the other day. Um, they've all seen the film. Nick came to the premiere in New York. Um, so yeah, I'm still in touch, but I think we're all kind of enjoying a, a much-deserved break after nine pretty intense years together, so. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to. I mean, it's the kind of thing that you could kind of, I could have kept shooting and shooting and shooting, which is kind of where we ended up, how we ended up here. So I would love to sort of revisit them and see where they are in another five, 10 years.